from the sea And now I miss those kickbacks Days we never get back Without you, girl, I couldn't be me But now we off that, on that How the hell I got that bad little fish Yo, did I tell you I got a little, like, intro? Are we live? We live, we live, we live, we in it. We in it. You want you want your way? Oh sure, sure. Yo, 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 it's your boy yo yo back with another video. <laughs> we got a special yeah, guest today. We got my boy, my only, uh Sean Hurley. Sean, thank you so much for being on. My man, my man, really, really appreciate it. Thank uh, you for say having what's me. up, Sean. Uh, just thank you for having me, man. I'm really excited to get this started. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually, going. I'm actually really excited to have you on, bro. Because I, I know I told you that you're gonna be a guest, but I really hope, and you know, you know, I hope to all the viewers, you know, show you a lot of love. Because I hope we can keep you on and add you as our co-host. Uh, I think you bring a lot of insight. Uh, you have a, you know, you have a very diverse background. Um, you know, from from like being a rapper, from you know, coding. Uh, you know, and from being a Bay Area native. Um, so yeah, my man, I hope you enjoy the show and I hope uh, I hope you come back for more. Hope you come back for more. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so He's a salesman at heart. We all we also look a little bit crazy too when like you know we're all quiet just for the viewers. We got we got yeah. our, uh, our main man Jordan in our ear. Uh, so when we're quiet, he's speaking to us. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Um, John, my man, man uh, real quick. The curtains, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, real quick, my man. Uh, you're you're also a senior. Uh, me and you went to make school together. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about your experience at make school and? um you know how it impacted your life or how you know whatever you want to share uh yeah so um uh let's see how do i how do i begin this so uh i originally started going to san jose state and uh you know i was an engineering student there and you know i was having a difficult time like passing my classes because once you get to the, the advanced courses you know your uh your upper divs all of a sudden, you don't really have YouTube, Google, Chegg, all these things as good resources, you know, because it's such like a small like field that nobody really covers. So I noticed myself not having a lot of help. Uh, the tutors didn't even know some of the material because they're like learning it too sometimes. So they weren't uh, that much help. And then every time I go to office hour, it would either be like packed with a bunch of students that you couldn't even get your question answered or the teacher would just, you know, just be like not... I would say uh, kind of like not even caring about their students, you know, they just kind of get their paycheck and just kind of bounce, yeah, you know? They're, yeah, they're, they're very dismissive. dismissive. And I noticed like in, especially at San Jose State was like, it was very cutthroat, you know, like you had, like you're in a classroom with 200 kids. And even if you were able to like form little study groups, like it seemed like people were just trying to get their information and just kind of bounce where there was no like yeah. camaraderie, camaraderie, you know, there's just, mm -hmm. uh, everyone just on their own. So I, I was struggling at San Jose State, you know, I ended up dropping out because for six months, I didn't even know what I was going to do, but I just knew that I needed to do something like in order, like I wanted to change the world, but the only way I knew, to, like, knew how to do that was like, like going to school, right? But I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So um, my friend, I remember Razi. Real talk, bro. Real talk, bro. Like you, you one of the people that's like, for, for people that don't know, Sean's like, like one of my closest friends. Bro, I know you're gonna change the world. You're gonna you're gonna for show sure impact it somehow, my man. You're gonna leave your mark for right. show for show. Sure. Yeah, like that's why I feel like the meaning of life really resides, you know, because like I've like learned from like other individuals, like money doesn't really solve your happiness. It doesn't really 
all these material possessions don't really bring you anything. So I kind of learned at an early age, like I need to do something past that in order to be feel find fulfillment. So, you know, that's why I chose engineering. I was like, and then I found computer science later on. Uh, when I found out about May school, what really uh, intrigued me to go to that school is that it was already a set course, right? Because when I was going to San Jose State, you know, they give you like a plan, but you know, you fail one course and all of a sudden you're supposed to graduate 2021. Now it's 2023 because that class is only offered a certain term. Yeah, but then yeah, you go to May school, yeah. it's like, no, everything's set. You take it this course, this course, that course. And as long as you just work hard, you know, you go and pass. As long as you do the work, you put in the effort, like there's no way you're going to fail. And that's what like, I loved about May school because like I was working hard as I was at State and I was getting no results, you know. But then mm -hmm. as soon as mm -hmm. I go to May school, like I was able to like find like this. It's kind of it's, it's wild, to be honest, like this whole community of like coders, you know, like, yeah, from, like top to like, bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom. Like as soon as one person learns something now, they're like, like they almost like required to like give back that information somehow, you know, and there's so much of information on Google, so much on YouTube, like, you know, like there's Udemy courses, so many places to get your resource and information and get it done versus what I was doing before. It sounds like state was like, you're kind of screwed if you don't have it, like, you can't figure it out you know and like you just see the divide between like the kids that are gonna make it and the kids are not gonna make it you know and um yeah like uh going to may school i originally was a back-end concentration and then yeah so i actually uh, actually want to get in get in get in with that with you uh because uh i feel like me and you butt heads a little bit because i'm a back-end you know yeah. back-end developer and you ditched me man we were, we were in it together we had the same classes for the longest time and you're like I'm gonna be nope. <laughs> it's like nope. so um i'd actually have to credit browse for that uh one of my coaches uh, uh so uh i originally joined back end because you know i saw my other friends are doing it they're making really good money and it seemed like those back end engineers were more expected when it came to like computer science you know like uh because it's more technical more abstract so i was like that's what i just chose like oh this is this is a thing for me I always considered front end as like, oh, that's like some cows play like elementary cool schools type stuff where like anybody can figure it out, right? And everybody can like do it on the fly. So I just kind of discredited it completely without even knowing anything about front end. Yeah. And yeah, it's um, like all design, I, like it's just like, you know, built like how the website looks and everything. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. So just put, I can figure out. That's, that's how I thought right? about it the first time too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I, I was just like, this is some basic stuff. Like, might as well just be good, really good at back end and then I can just catch up with my front end, like, no problem, mm -hmm. right? Like, shouldn't mm -hmm. take that. It shouldn't be that hard. But, but then I noticed, like, while I was going to these back end classes, like, I'm doing all these projects. I'm not really seeing anything, you know? It, it just felt like there's so much abstract work. Like, I'd write like 30, 40 lines of code and then, like, like what <laughs> you know like oh you have a database and your database has like a whole bunch of objects stored in it like, all right cool <laughs> like oh you can just you know like it was just, it just it wasn't like intriguing me and it was like it was constantly felt like i was doing really hard work for no results so mm -hmm. it was, it was I, hard to it was hard to like uh apply what you were learning apply what you were like coding and mm -hmm. like seeing like what you can we can get out of it or like build from it i feel that i feel that yeah so that was like one of the factors that cheered me from that and then when i talked to browse he was telling me like right in is probably like the easiest concentration to start but one of the hardest to master because you have mm -hmm. constant new new technologies coming out like things you were using six months ago may not even be relevant now because this one thing came up you know like for example uh, Flexbox came out and that was like the big thing, right? And then CSS, CSS Grid comes out a couple years later and it just destroys Flexbox out of the water. Now it kind of seems like if you're going to bootstrap using those columns and spans and all that, like it just looks remedial. Like, why are you doing that? Did you see CSS Grids, right? So mm -hmm. is constantly evolving, constantly improving, getting better. And uh, also like our front end concentration use JavaScript mostly, right? So JavaScript is like almost the number one language I think right now that everyone's kind of using, uh, especially with React and React uh, is built off of JavaScript. And, you know, there's a lot of help for that too. If you go to Stack Overflow, you could find almost any problem like you have. Stack Overflow, sorry, it's my best friend. Stack Overflow, you know, best but... friend. <laughs> for real. I need, no, I I need feel more it, stock I feel 
I would always throw some coffee yeah. sometime, you know, helping me out all those tough times. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yo, uh, like real quick, you kept men- mentioning brows, and for our viewers out there, uh, when you come to make school, you get assigned a coach. Like every student has a coach that it's like it's like your counselor. Uh, not necessarily they are your counselor. You do have counselors that you can go to discuss, you know, your academic plan and things like that. Uh, but what's really dope and like, you know, it's going back to what you were saying earlier from top to bottom, like make school, make sure that like, you know, they take care of their community. One of the things is that they assign you a coach and this coach is someone that you can go to and not just only discuss like, you know, what you're learning in school and, you know, like your, your career and things like that. Like you can also go to them about like personal issues and things like that, which I, which I thought was really dope. Um, but yo, yeah. thank you uh, for, quick note. for uh, go ahead, my man. I was a quick note. Uh, I did, I wasn't uh, originally assigned to browse. I actually had to like go through multiple coaches before, like I chose him and found him. So you know, maybe like once you once you do get to make school, see if you like that coach is for you because you might connect a little more with another instructor or another coachee versus you know someone else. So that's what uh, I feel that. I feel that. I feel like I got really lucky. Too. I got linked up with Dan the man, you know, and ever since that it was like clear sky. <laughs> yeah, no, make school has a really good staff. I'm not gonna lie. Like, there's from top to bottom, there's not like one person you could honestly complain about. Like yeah, yeah, everyone's yeah. dedicated. Everyone's like has a common goal. They know what that goal is and they're trying to achieve that goal. And they're constantly looking for feedback and improvement too. Like, I don't know any other university that every term their students have to fill out a bunch of feedback surveys on how they like the course professor and like, you know, what things could be improved. You know, usually you just take the course and you're over, it's done, right? And then maybe you could go to rate my professor if you really hate the professor, but like, that was about it. But now it's like every term, like, did you like it? Did you no, not like you're it? Right. Tell you're right. Why? You're right. Yeah, no. And like, no, they dude, they they take that feedback seriously. Like I remember like seriously. we uh, we got we got a housing. I don't know if you remember, we got that housing survey. Oh yeah. And we were like, <laughs> oh yeah, we all want to move out. Oh yeah, we don't we don't want to live in the dorms. You want to like move out. But like none of us like really like once we sat down and, and thought about the logistics of moving out, we we're like, nope, nope, we want to stay. We want to stay. So then when the staff <laughs> came out, it was like, oh, you guys don't want to live in the dorms anymore. We're like, okay. And they were like, wait, wait, wait. I was like, hey, I was like no. no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing that I love about May School is like everything is like designed and set up for you to succeed. All you got to do is put in the work, you know? If you're dedicated and you can grind, you want to put in the work and you see yourself doing this, like it's going to happen for you, you know? It's really is. 100%. 100%. 100%. Um, well, let's let's uh, let's 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 jump into what we came uh, came here uh, to do. Um, I know you're a front end uh, engineer, so uh, you know uh, this is this is your like alley of expertise. Um, but um, you know, just just to give just to give like our viewers a quick idea of what we're going to be doing today. Uh, from our from our title up top, yeah, we are going to be building a autocomplete search bar. Uh, so real quick, this is a uh, website that I built uh, at Make School, um, and I think it was what was a uh, what was that Node class called? Was it a uh, back in one point three, right? It was just Node.js. I think it's yeah, one point three, yeah. One point three. Back in one point three, I was able to to build this. As you can see, I'm currently logging in through Spotify. I'll I'll plug you guys with um, I guess the 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 npm module that I used. Uh, to to you know easily sign in with Spotify. You can sign in with Gmail if you want, Apple, things like that. It's very dope. It's called Passport JS. We'll check out the documentation in a sec. But once I log in, you know I had this uh, this friends column right over here, and I kind of already went you know just to test the code and everything and, and do it. But this friends column, all the users right here, they would populate right over here. I know it's hard. I can't like highlight anything. Can I use this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what's I'm trying to use inspector. Inspector only. Boom, boom, boom. You see this? Is this popping up on the screen? Oh, this yeah, is popping yeah. up on the screen. Uh, so all the users would just pop up right here. And it was annoying because like if, if for any privacy reasons or anything like that, you know, you don't want to just have all your users just like show up, right? So we're, we're, we, uh, we're going to build or we're going to show you how, how to build um, a autocomplete auto search bar. 
So when I'm typing in something over here, you know, you see now, okay, Yusuf is popping up, right? I type in S, okay, all the users with S are popping up, you know? Um, I, I tried to get you guys more users in today to, to show it, but unfortunately we got two. Um, but, but yeah, uh, real quick, Sean, um, when you are, uh, I guess, uh, using authentication or building a website to authentic authenticate a user, can you just quickly talk about, you know, um, how difficult it is to do it on your own? And if there's like, if there is a package that you like to use, or if there is a framework that you like to use to do that, what framework is it? Uh, a great man once told me, uh, don't reinvent the wheel. <laughs> so usually a lot of this user authentication is already out there. They already have like this code written out for you. So you can just find uh, ways to implement it, right? But um, I would not suggest you try to figure out and do it on your own because, you know, you can run into a lot of different problems. So you just probably have to like find the right resources, depending on what project you're doing, what you're trying to exactly build, right? What kind of uh, technologies you're using on your, on your uh, project, like you'd go from there. But yeah, but you can talk yeah, about I Prosper think, too, because Prosper is a game changer right here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, I think you're right. I think like one of the hardest things, at least uh, for me to implement is like just thinking about it is like securing people's like passwords. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that in itself is just hard. Like, yeah, you have to hash it and things like that. Um, and I don't know, I just don't feel like, I feel like I'll rather dedicate a team because like this is like when we use Passport, it's not built by one person. No, it's maintained by, by a team. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think, I think those are, those are just my, my thoughts. So real quick, Passport right here, this is it. It's called Passport.js. Dot org. This is a, this is a website. Um, you know, as you can see, like over here, Google, Facebook was just on there. I hope this is a big enough text for everyone to see. I know sometimes it's small. GitHub, you can do GitHub. And um, I love like look. So this is this is what I love about it. It also has strategies. What they call it strategies. This is kind of like your boilerplate. Uh, so if you did want to use like Passport for Facebook, you know, you pop up over here. And they'll tell you exactly, uh, look at that, look at the ad. Uh, they'll, they'll pop, they'll tell you exactly what you got to do to use Passport or to have Facebook authentication in your thing. So look at this, this is the code right here. This is literally you like copy, we, <laughs> me and Sean got a word, it's copy pasta. Pretty much when you like go to a repo, go to the documentation, and you literally copy it and paste it into your code. Oh, uh, you know. Um, so this is this is this is this is pretty much it right here. And I'll and I'll show you in our application uh, what we did. And of course, there's always the documentation over here. Uh, if you had any questions about you know using Passport.js, <clears throat> but but yeah, let's hop in and and check out the code. Um, so yeah. Real quick, Sean, um, can you break down, can you help me break down? I know I built this, but you know, I also wanna hear it from you. Uh, help me break down this folder that I have going over here uh, and kind of speak to like, for example, what is my app.js? So Testing your app.js, right I'm yeah, on the spot, right? So your <laughs> app.js is pretty much like your main JS file that's going to be uh, running. That's where, for you. so if you're using node.js, that's where you put all your, uh, you click the file, you can kind of see uh, the stuff that you required, like your app.use, you could use, uh, yeah, express using uh, different packages, using a socket IO. So this is kind of where you set up all your backend stuff right here. And yeah, so it's pretty much just like setting up your environment, you know, like this yeah. is, this is going to be the main things of your server, right? Uh, this is where, like, this is where you see that passport dot use, right? It's because any any time someone logs into our our website, they have to go through Spotify. Uh, so that's something that's going to be, like he said, in the main in the main thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so real quick, just diving in, like, look right over here, like passport dot use new Spotify strategy, right? And this was all given to us from uh, from uh, from passport dot js themselves. You know, um, and yeah, I'm not I'm not going to confuse you guys with with uh, this other stuff right over here. Uh, but real quick, uh, Sean, what's our controllers? 
So controllers pretty much uh, control the views that we have. It kind of goes, uh, so you could have a, a page that has one JS file, you could load that, and then you could switch it to another view. Uh, I don't know if I'm explaining this right, I'm using bad terminology, but it's pretty much yeah, like I'm, your pages. I'm, I'm... Yo, you, bro, you're, you're spot on. By the way, real quick, this is this is more of like the back end field. So I'm just putting yeah. my man Sean on the spot and testing him out. You're giving him a hard time. Show him a lot of love, he's please, guys. Um, he's still spiteful yeah, so that he, I switched to front end. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm never going to go let that go, bro. I'm never, never going to let that go. We're supposed to do it together, Sean. <laughs> um, so can, he's right. It's okay. <laughs> He's right. So in your controllers, uh, this is where you like, it's pretty much like your routes. You know, when we're, when we were using Django, I showed them Django like about like four weeks ago or something like that. Uh, so that urls.py for Django, this is pretty much it for node.js. Okay. Uh, so like, for example, over here, user search, this is going to be crucial uh, in helping us do the autocomplete search bar. Because we just need a function that returns to us all the users. Okay, it says users dot you like this is we so we're using a Mongo or Mongo mongoose um, database just for everyone's wondering, and this is how we query through uh, all the users. So it simply returns all the users right here, and it's it's now called users right here. Okay, we can kind of get rid of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Let's get rid of these console logs because we don't need them right now. Um, and to just really quick to understand this, uh, this function over here, um, once we hop over to the front end side or you know, when we're, when we're you know, coding the front end for this, uh, we need a function to pretty much fetch from, or we need a URL to pretty much fetch from uh, to just simply collect all our users. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, instantiate a uh, pretty much a list. The multiple users we have, we're gonna add them to that list. So then we can just filter through the list and check all the users, okay? Uh, and then, so we, we run a simple for loop, right? We set index at zero. Uh, we make sure index never exceeds the length of all, their, all our users. And every time it completes whatever's inside of it, keep adding to the index, okay? Uh, it's, it's just, this is how JavaScript, you know, does their for loops. In Python, you just do for user, in users, or you, you, you have to have like, a, or maybe for range, just so you don't like see the limit thing. Ah, it's okay, it's okay. Anyway, all we need, all we need for that, if, uh, if we go back uh, to our website, all we had was the username and the photo. So all we pretty much just need to send to the front end is just that, our name and photo, okay? And once we've collected that information, boom, we just, our response, this is our response right here, we send it out, okay? So Sean, as a back end, right? I took care of what you need in the route, okay? Can you help us walk through what we're gonna be doing uh, on the other side, you know, pretty much now from going to the back end, you know, this is because this is the server. So now once we leave the server, right, and we're on the user's, you know, web browser, can you help us discuss what's going to happen uh, in that web browser? Um, right. And it's, it's right over yeah. here. Okay. All right. Look, how about we just um, break this down line by line? <laughs> let's do it. So, let's do it. So it looks like the uh, first line, you're just pretty much getting the element from that uh, HTML. Yeah, just so you're instantiating getting, what, whatever we need from whatever we need to pull. Or, yeah, okay, okay. Yep, so you're going to use those. And then next, it looks like you're using an async. So you're trying to pretty much return a promise or get a promise, right? So you're using the fetch call to go to fetch it on that. Okay, so yeah, when the user search searches something, it's going to fetch that. Um, URL and then it's gonna give you a response in JSON because that's what you did a dot JSON. So it's gonna turn that uh, object into a JSON uh, or object, right? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. next it says you're going to okay. So use the filter. So you're gonna filter through the users using a regular expression. 
Okay, so okay, hold on. So you're using a regular expression and you're going to put in the search text that you put in, right, in the input field. And uh, I forgot what this GI is. I think the GI is a lowercase or something. What is, you know, yeah, that yeah. Is. So it, it pretty much it's like it's weird. It's weird syntax. I had to look it up. Um, and we can actually like maybe even go look up what it actually means. But um, it allows you to uh, it allows it to query or, you know, filter through the whole like name. So like if you typed in S, for example, if it's not like the first name, but it's in the last name, it'll still populate, mm -hmm. you know, and it's all like you said, lowercase and, and, and uppercase. OK, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. So then, then you're gonna return that match if it matches that regular expression uh, above, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Then, exactly. So uh, I actually wanna, I actually wanna comment this out. I don't wanna talk about this right now, because I, I wanna run our code without this, and show them what happens, and why this is crucial. Because I think this one is like it's better to see it than to just like talk about it. You know what I mean? Okay. Um. So yeah. So yeah. So let's move on. And can you can you help me out understand this uh, uh, this 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 function right over here? Uh, so you got the searches. You try to filter it, see if it matches or not. And now you want uh, to output that. That's what we did. That. Up, that's what we did up here in the in the search users. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So once you find that user, you want to be able to output that. So I guess you're using. Uh, using your matches, it's making sure the length is uh, greater than zero. So if it exists, right, we're going mm -hmm. to then map it, right? Map filter reduce are awesome. If you're, if you're in JavaScript, you gotta learn those. You're gonna map it and you're going to pretty much put in your own HTML, it seems, right? Can, can, and then- can, we, can I ask you why, can I ask you why mapping or this function is dope? Cause when I used it, I was like, man, it made it a lot easier to code this. Yeah, so um, it's pretty much like taking an array and returning a new one with the information that you want. Does that make sense? So like mm -hmm. you can, uh, so say you have like 300 objects in your uh, JSON file, right? You can map it by only using things that match this or, or uh, I don't know, like things that's just certain criteria. You only, and you will return a whole new array that fits that. Does that make sense? I don't know if I explained that. No, no, uh, no, no. I think, I think, I think it did. I think it did. And I think the, the other thing that I'm just like also noticing with my eyes, right, is that going to our like our backend function, we had to have a for loop to filter through each user, right? But what's dope mm -hmm. that I can automatically see about map is that it's automatically filtering through our matches. We call it match right here. We can have this call whatever we want. To be honest, we just called it match, right? Uh, for the sake of you know being consistent, and then it's gonna populate the this pretty much um, this whole div or this whatever this HTML that we've created for each user. And I was like, man, that kind of kind of like blew my mind. Uh, Game so changer, it was, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Save the lines of code <laughs> <laughs> and logic, to be honest, and logic, which I love. Yeah. I love. Yeah. yeah, it's very simple to follow when you have this. When you have a bunch of for loops running and you know a bunch of data objects, you're like, "What? <laughs> this is like mm -hmm. boom, concrete, ready to go." Mhm, mm mhm. Mm um. So yeah, and then it looks like all that we do is pretty much after after we made it, we send it to our actual HTML, which is called match list, which we pulled up from the very top. You know, that second line. Um, you know, we pulled up that match list. And then lastly, can you just, can you just, uh, I know, uh, break this, this one liner down for me. Uh, so for this one, okay. So when you are on a website and you like either click something like either with your mouse or in this case, it looks like you have an input, right? So like CSS and HTML can't really handle that. JavaScript handles that. So this uh, add event listener pretty much waits to, for the input to have like an actual value inside of that uh, the little input box. And once it does, then it will execute this code pretty much. Otherwise it would just be static and wouldn't really do anything. It pretty much gives it the functionality. 
I don't I don't want to hate hate on HTML, but you know they do say that it's not a programming language, uh, and this is like JavaScript is what is what brings like HTML and and CSS to to life. Even though CSS can do a little bit of things, can do like some animation, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, yeah. Uh, can, without yeah. without some JavaScript, without some JavaScript. Um, for sure, I think for the sure. best way uh, somebody explained it was uh, HTML is like the skeleton, right? And then uh, CSS is like the skin on top of the skeleton, right? It gives it the look. And then JavaScript gives it the life and motion, you know, it gives it Ooh. able to move, Ooh. you know? Getting deep on so you, it. Getting deep on you can't, it. You can't co coexist with all three, without all three, you know? You kind of, like, you need it all. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, dope, dope. Okay, so um, it looks like we got it all, right? Uh, I did block out this code right over here. Let's see how it breaks our project. Open up that terminal, make sure it's still running. Node mod, I love node mod. Uh, real quick, if you guys aren't familiar with node mod, it's something that you just like run in the background of the, in your terminal. And it, um, you know, anytime you make any changes to your file, your code base, uh, you know, it recompiles for you and reboots it up. Uh, so you don't have to always, you know, do that tedious command where you're like, oh, control C, let me kill my server and then open it up again. Is that a, it's a live server, right? Is that the same thing or yeah. Is it different? Yeah, okay, good check. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, live, ser I live servers are game changers. So I want to open up the console too so that you guys are seeing what's, what's happening over here. By the way, uh, do you know how to fix this right over here? It's like, it's not an actual error. It's just like, you know, you hate to see errors as a coder, but it doesn't actually affect the change of, any, of anything. Uh, and it's happening because up top over here, you know, I have this autocomplete in, inserted into our main HTML, right? Uh, if people are interested in seeing how it looks like. Um, so in our views right over here, have layouts have our main HTML handlebars, right? Um, and just to, just to look at this, how it breaks down over here. So we have a nav bar. Every page is gonna have a classic nav bar, right? And then we have our body, right? It's a, it's a method that people use to, uh, um, you know, to not consistently having to change your, your main layout, especially if it looks similar, you know? Um, and then our search is, is right over here. But yeah, um, our script down here. So it's in our main one. So this script is running and pulling elements uh, on any page that we're on our website. So even our homepage, it's trying to pull those elements. Uh, and that's why, I got, that's why I got this error. Hmm. I don't know, I was probably just gonna do a stack overflow and uh, try to figure out how to how to take that apart. All right, so we're here. I did block out some. Go ahead, go ahead. You want no, no, go ahead. You good? You good? It's, oh, it's gone now. So I was actually oh, gonna ask just... you to uh, to. Uh, I was gonna actually ask you while while I'm going to do this with them, if you can search on Stack Overflow for us real quick and see what we can do to fix this. Really okay. Uh, okay, so this is still popping up, but you, uh, okay. So I thought I broke my code, but there is a bug. And if you guys notice it, I got type in Q, there's no Q at all, right? But it's still showing these things up. One of the reasons that it's doing that is because I once searched for Y Right, and this is this is the why that pops up. But now that there's no more, um, I guess uh, there's like there's no more input. It's showing me everything. You know, one of the reasons it did that is because this line of code is very very important. Um, Sean, can you help us go over it real quick, Doctor Two? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. So we're pretty much checking to see if that text is pretty much there or not. So when you delete that letter, nothing should be populating because, uh, you know, it's it 
breaks that little code right there because now like length is a equal to zero. I don't know if I'm mm -hmm. doing sense right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it pretty much does that check. So if there's nothing in the input field, it shouldn't be showing anything. Yeah, our matches, our matches are uh, should be equal to zero, and that match list inner dot HTML should also be empty. So when we uncomment this, right? Look at that. Our node node mod automatically reboots our thing for us. Let's refresh the page. Of course, we have to re-log in because we disconnected from our server. Right? Um, boom. We're going to add friends. Tap and Y. Populates. Erase it. It goes away. Money. Money. <laughs> oh, I think... Go back to your code. I think you need to add one more thing that could make it look a little better. Tell so me, tell if me. you go to line 11, right before that money, the dollar sign on line 11, if you put a carrot sign, it would only get the uh, first letter of the word, I think. So I think that could fix your problem. Before that, before uh, the where? dollar sign? Before, before the, the dollar, dollar sign? sign like this? Yeah, do a sh shift, uh, shift uh, six. See if that changes anything. I think I've Let's read see. something. So like it shouldn't show both of them. Yeah, I was noticing that. I think we have a little bug going on. Yeah, I saw that too. Live, uh, a live D oh, I was I was like hoping like no one no one like noticed it, you know what I mean? There you go. Ooh. So now it'll only check for the first oh, but it doesn't get the last name though. That's a problem. Hmm. Let's uh, let's take that out and see what was going on with that bug. Maybe use the last uh, few minutes to uh, to debug it together. So we took we take this out. Let's see what's going on. This is one of the things I hate about testing is that like you have to like re log in, you know, do all these things over. Maybe we got to do like a uh, a a session or a, a live stream on how to how to you know test this using like unit testing or uh, yeah. things like that. Unit testing definitely save you a lot of time. <laughs> okay, so look, I typed in R. This is something weird that's happening. Type in R. My name doesn't have R at all at all in it, but I still pop up. So let's, I think let's it does, R. right? In your last name. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That makes that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Maybe try so, a letter that doesn't have. Like, go back to it. Let's see if they can find. Like, maybe. Oh, maybe mm. at, uh, but I do have an F. Man. Dang. <laughs> or L. Man, we both L. have, huh? Maybe, maybe right. if I go like this. There you go. If I go like that. Mm. Oh, you're right. Also L. L. L is not in it. Okay, dope. So I guess, I guess it's just up to, uh, you know, I kind of like it this way, just in case they're like, you know, searching for some mm. random things. Users can pop up, especially really nice when you don't only have two users. So things can pop up. Yo, guys, <laughs> when I send this live, <laughs> and uh, I think that's what we're going to do for our next uh, next stream, is uh, we're going to be using something called Cap Rover. John, have you ever used Cap Rover before? Never heard of it. Okay, okay. So maybe we can invite you on next stream, and I can tell you about Cap Rover, one of <laughs> my favorite, uh, you know, uh, I guess you can call it, is it a framework? Um what is what is PAA stand again stand for again? Let's look at it. Oh, uh, it's like platform platform as a service. Platform uh, as a service. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah you're yeah, right. You platform. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, real quick, uh, I guess plugging in our, our next our next show is like Cap Rover platform as a service. Uh, attaches to your server. So like if you have, if you're using DigitalOcean, um, DigitalOcean is like a hosting, uh, like it's a, it's a company that allows you to host, allows you to purchase servers. Um, so if you have your own server, you can install Cap Rover. And what's dope about DigitalOcean is that they actually have like a droplet uh, that like you few clicks of a button, here it is, create a do droplet, few clicks of a button, uh, it'll be automatically installed and um, you know, Sean, when you're when you're uh, when you're, I guess, when you want to host like a single page, it doesn't necessarily like it's just simply like front end, simply HTML front end, no back end. What do you serve it on? 
Um, I guess first easiest solution probably be GitHub. Uh, uh, GitHub pages. You can just make like a little uh, GitHub IO and you can like post it on there. But I fell in love with Netlify. I don't know if you heard of that one. Have you heard of Net Netlify? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Love Netlify. Uh -huh. So um, Netlify allows you to like, you know, connect your GitHub. And as soon as you push a change on your GitHub, the live, uh, uh, the live website will automatically be updated. So you don't have to, it's no more Heroku days, right? When you have to like go ch check the logs and try to figure out. Oh, like, Heroku stopped supporting MongoDB, my man. I got to go in now to all like my, my projects that I've like, pushed on Heroku and like figure out a way now to like host them somewhere else. I'm not going to go back over there and change my routes, you know? Heroku was a big L. <laughs> <laughs> if we had Netlify to start, oh, my God. There would have been so many, like, Game headaches changer. saved. Game changer. <laughs> Better nights I will of sleep. Say, I will say, I haven't, I haven't personally used uh, NFL uh, or Net, Net, Netlify, sorry, not NFL. Um, so I can't really speak on it. But I know, I know Cap Rover does the same thing. So once you, because, oh, okay. you know, we're all working out of our GitHub repos. Once you make mm -hmm. a push to your GitHub repo, boom, it's updating your server with that new code. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, guys, um, if you, uh, I think, I think that's pretty much it in terms of, you know, our autocomplete search bar over here. I hope, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned it, uh, one or two things, you know. I hope you guys enjoyed my man, Sean. Uh, you know, please show him a lot of love. I'd love to have him, you know, on future videos. Real quick, now, man, um, I want to plug you. Uh, where should people hit you up on? I'm um, dropping it in the, in our Twitch chat. Um, Ooh, like for what? On on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, they like to follow you if you have any questions. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, Sorry, music guys, artist. We, as well. we got our <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I maybe maybe we'll say, let's do that. Let's do that. Um, so, uh, so si similar to uh, real, real quick, Cody. Real, real, real quick, oh, my go man. Ahead, go ahead. Major major props to my man Sean, because like I'm over here like working on projects, trying to finish up the term. Sean, of course, is doing the same thing because we go to make school. But then at the end of the term, he's like, "Oh, by the way, I'm dropping a new album." I'm like. When did you have the time to finish, you, the time. you know, all our, <laughs> all our projects and still drop a fire album? Uh, so, yeah, sorry, Sean. Go, go ahead, my man. Uh, yeah, uh, same thing with similar to coding, you know. Like, the reason why I got into music, too, is, you know, I'm trying to make an impact on this world. And I feel like, you know, music nowadays is uh, – people would just like make music just to make money or just to get the cloud or just to you know get something out of it but and, and the music has so much more power than that it can like really change somebody's life right like if you can able to connect with somebody they can hear your music and be like you know what i was gonna do this but now i'm gonna think like this and do that you know so most of my i try to have all my music have like a deeper message and they're all conceptual projects um and uh, yeah, I've been doing this since 2018, right? It's actually like, right when I started May School, that's actually when I started like making music too. It was right around the same time. Like, it's like, I need to make moves to like change the world somehow. And that's why I figured out coding music is gonna get me there, man. Uh, you, you definitely hustle for it, my man. And I, I know one day, one day you'll, you'll definitely be, you'll, be, you'll definitely be up there. It's fine, <laughs> slowly but surely. Well, <laughs> uh, yo, my man, is there is there a certain song that you want? I know I know King is one of my favorites. Um, is there a certain song that you want us to end off on? Um, but yo, real quick, I do want to plug you if you're welcome doing that, just in case you know anyone wants to connect with you, has any questions, um, you know, to hit you up. I usually do my LinkedIn. Uh, if you would like to do your LinkedIn, and of course, yeah, guys, just like send it to you right. If you're, if you're on if you're on Spotify, follow your boy. Click over here. I uh, just unfollow to follow again. There you go. <laughs> you know? And then snap, like drop a few likes. That's the ratings. Show if. 
I like it. <laughs> real, real, uh, real quick though, uh, I'm not understanding. So, goat. What's T boy? And what's what's Poggers? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, guys, uh, everyone out there watching right now, if uh, if you can help us uh, finish this poll, uh, you know what? Pretty much, just let us know what you what you thought of today of uh, today's show. I'm gonna drop in and, and vote. This one was the best one yet because uh, it featured your uh, our boy Sean, boy Sean Oh, okay. oh, oh, my bad, my bad. We can even drop in some uh, drop in some emojis. Oh, I subscribe to you link for you on Slack. On Slack? Sweet, yeah. sweet. I'll uh, go in, copy that. Boom. All right, sweet, sweet, sweet. Let's, uh, yo, Sean, anything you'd like to say before we end it? Uh, Which song do you wanna, want us to play on the, on the way out? You can play your favorite, man. I just want to thank you, Yusuf, for having me. Thank Jordan for having me as well. Uh, it's not as bad as I thought. I was pretty nervous in the beginning, I'm not going to lie. But Yo, can we have right. you back on bad. the show, bro? Can we have you back on the show? Please, my man, please. I might have to go come through one more time <laughs> just to I'll, test it I'll, out. I'll have my people talk to your people. All right, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> good job, good job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, hey guys, thank you. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, you know, me and Sean definitely appreciated you uh being here. Um, you know, if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to hit us up on LinkedIn. I dropped our boy Sean's LinkedIn in the in the chat and uh and the Discord. Sorry, I always I always keep forgetting to plug the disc our Discord. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, you know, uh we would love to hear from you guys. Uh, pop into our streams, hit us up on the chat. We'll, we'll stop what we're doing to, uh, to make sure that you're taken care of. Uh, on that note, thank you guys, and I hope you guys have a good week. I was just being drawn to you. <laughs> it's actually one of my favorites. Oh, jeez, oh, what a line. You use that on all the girls? No.